Hello, uh, this is part three of uh, what is music design and uh, let's dive into it. We left it at uh, what if the music can help player understanding the gameplay? What if the music tells the story at the same time? What if the music is performed in real time and ultra reactive? I'm very excited, are you? But before going into a demonstration in games, let's just talk about, you know, um, who makes music design. That's very important. So. The truth is anyone can, game designers, level designers, sound designers, composers, anybody, your friend, your neighbor, I don't know, your mom, uh, because it's ideas and ideas can come up from any locations you have to embrace, you know. However, between an ID and how to make it, it's way different. You know, it's like these people that say, oh, I have an idea for this game. It happens in space and you have to conquer planets. But uh, in order to conquer planets, you need to do the... I mean, you know what I mean, like it's very complex. Having an idea is very easy. Uh, also, music needs time to express a discourse. So that's important as well. Uh, I'm not here to have music that is just a sort of a gimmick background-ish, sort of uh, reacting to what's going on with no meaning, with no substance. I like when music do something more than just being musical in a sense like, oh, there is music, but rather have a substance to it and it needs time you know to do this so bear in mind about this and of course composers can help the developers if they know about music design some composers do know about music design now uh i would say that helping de developers is not to just say oh what if the music could do this 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 that 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 because that's not very helping it's like as i said anyone can have ideas like this uh, it's more like designing the systems in a way you're like, oh, I know how I can compose with the systems or actually making them, which is something that I usually do, but I'm very happy when I don't uh, and I'm here to help. Therefore, it means that, you know, when you're the composer and you see the, co the, the, the systems, you understand how it works and you can provide uh, the, you know, the music in the way, like the production of the music in the way that fits the necessary requirement. So now, once again, the misconceptions, just, you know, again, don't mean that the music drives the gameplay. Music design is not about driving the gameplay at all. Actually, it's the opposite. It's serving the gameplay. Obviously, some games do this. You know, it can be like a, the force lead for gameplay, but this is not what I'm talking about here. This is an exception. It doesn't mean that the music is telling a story, okay? Once again, storytelling is not part of every game, so don't think music design equals storytelling. And it doesn't mean that it must be complex. That's the, you know, the one thing that sometimes people have, like, oh, yeah, music design, it's like all those complex things, we don't care. No, it's not about being complex, it's rather being uh, serving what the games is asking for and if it's asking for something simple you go simple if it's asking for something more complex well if you want to you go which is me and then you're happy you know <sighs> so let's look look at a proper example a plague tale innocence at the time requiem was not out requiem as a let's say more advanced uh, system than this one but as it's so basic here you will get it even better maybe not maybe Requiem is even better on every ground. Yes, it is. So David Daden is the creative director and the dev vision. So you always start with the dev vision was like, okay, you're Amicia, the rune, this, you know, teenager, she's 14 years old during a medieval age. And she has to fight through, you know, to, to, to go through a, a path where she will encounter big adults like soldiers. Uh, and in medieval age, you know, they are not like joking around. And they are very scary and very lethal. If you, can't, if you come close to these guys, then you will have this sort of like, woo, uh, I'm going to die. And this is what happens in the game. You know, you die quickly. So he said, you know what? I'd like the players to feel the threat, to feel that you have a sense of, uh, you know, the closer you get to this threat, the bigger the threat. So that's, you know, sort of easy to make, I would say. But now we're talking something that will be, let's say, um, uh, produced in real time, depending on parameters from the game. So let's look at without the music, the sequence. 
And so Amicia is coming Amicia, close to... Look, it's one of the men that attacked the house. So it was like, we need to have tension here. So it needs to start there. Of course, music is never all over, you know, wall to wall. I mean, you can make mu music all wall to wall, but I would recommend to give some breath. Do I look like a rat? Now the threat is far. Well, I say we need okay. rid of these nests using stupid. And as you go closer we have to, to the soldier, your mid range. They like the dark. So back to business. And then, you know, it's going to be like all of these games. I think Sprinter Cell was the first game to sort of use this sort of stealth um, state of, oh, I see you. I'm not sure. Maybe Metal Gear Solid. An odd sound. So. The AI is suspicion, you know, the, the, he's coming up because he heard this sound and it's so, so, it's medieval age, you know. These people were not very advanced in the brain, but now we have all these implants and so we're much smarter. But the thing is, um, it was nothing, nothing. Ba basically, you know, it's the old kind of like state, oh, he can see me, maybe not. But then there is the distance, and this is what's very different from Sprint to Cell, because it means that the music is evolving depending on your movements rather than the state. Okay, it's not like oh you're trying to uh, sense something, but rather you're trying to move around, and you'll see how the music will react to this. Now, boom, you know the threat is far because it was closed, and then it's far. So that's pretty much. Uh, what I will show now with the music in. I was super excited. Aren't you excited? I mean, when you see that and you're a composer like me, like a gamer, and you want to give some freshness to the genre, then it's it's super exciting. So we went and was and I was like, okay, so that's the concept. He wanted to have the bigger you would be to the closer you would be to the the threat, the bigger the music. So now we're talking music design. Hey, lady. I mean, she's growing up. I'm doing some composition and I'm having cellos. You know, that was uh, the instrument we wanted to have for the game. And very easily, you know, we decided that, oh, so when you're close to the enemy, it should be super loud and super low in terms of pitch. But... The further you go, it should become, you know, medium range in terms of pitch to high pitch and sort of, you know, soft pianissimo. So if I'm far, it's piano, high pitch, and the closer I get, the lower and the bigger the music. So now, the, yeah, of course, <laughs> let's listen now with the, the game. Amicia, look. It's one of the men that attacked the house. The Inquisition. They're here. How'd they do that? They're only fucking animals. Do I look like a rat? How should I know? Well, I say we'll never get rid of these nests using stupid lime. Whatever happens. We have to get out of here before the sun goes down. They like the dark. So back to business. So as you can hear, it's as if the cellist was looking at the picture and depending on where you are to the threat, it will change the pitch. Not sound. That's the state of being in suspicion. So this is like this sort of eerie, weird sounds. Nah, nothing, nothing here. Amicia, look, there's a bridge that leads to the farm. What a waste of time. The Grand Inquisitor should just tell us what he really wants from us. Listen when I kill the guy, how the music goes to the...
This is not coded. This is just because of distance, and it's doing it on its own. And the second barricade, no one will ever get I don't know. I'm going to the bridge. Look. The car will be back with the other barricades. We are trapped. There's a hole in the wall. I'm too big. You'll have to go in and open the window for So, th this is amazing. This is amazing because we can have a sort of like music reacting in a very musical way to what's going on with the, the environment, with the player's action, with everything. And we're also telling what the creative director wanted, which is like, I want to feel the threat closer. If you play Plague Tale Requiem, it's even bigger. We've made like this concept even further with percussions with, and it's like very, very nasty when you get close to them. So let's go back to the big misunderstanding. We had those two continents, you know that. And now we sort of like, ah, oh, you know what? We know how to reunite, unite these two continents. And this is thanks to music design. Yeah, she's growing, look at this. But you would think that now she's this kid and the two continents will make it grow, her grow. And unfortunately, this is what really happens. Because in the real world, the real one, not in my fantasy. The real world, 99% of games use basic music design, like, you know, states, layers. You could say, oh, that's exactly what I just heard. Well, no, that's not what you just heard. What you heard in Plague Tale is, as I've mentioned, depending on the distance, the music is telling the sort of story-ish emotional bit. And depending on the, of course, states, and of course, it's layers and everything, but it's not the way that is like based on a precise state of, okay, the, the exploration stealth, you know, like fight exploration or things like this. It's alive within the system of the state. I don't know if I'm clear here. The next game, you'll get it. Uh, but it's most celebrated games, you know, they have basic music design. So basically, if you're a developer or a composer and you know that the most celebrated games has, they have basic music design, why bother? You know, if it works, then we can just leave it as it is. Okay. And the thing is, I'm not here, I don't know about you, to get slapped, you know, like this. I'm here, you know, to try to, not to prove them wrong. I don't care. I'm here to explore. I'm here to try to find new ways. I'm here to experience something as a gamer, you know, that I've never felt. So that's why, as I said, most devs when I've been, uh, that I've been working with, they didn't know about music design. You know, it was like, okay, yeah, you can have these sort of states, and but it's, it's not as, you know, um, developed as it could be. So remember, we had like Streets of Rage that was just like following, let's say, the game structure with the music. Now we have um, Plague Tale that is like merging this sort of like real time uh, performance of the cello with the distance, you know, still some state as well. Uh, but since they didn't know, I had to show for their own game because they, you know, even if I show this to somebody it's not, you know, their game. They want to know what could be, you know, in their game. However, when I showed it to them, as I said, you know, on the very, very beginning, at the very beginning of the presentation, well, when they know after we work together, they are addicted to it. They understand what music design can do to your game because it's not once again, just like, oh yeah, it's fights. It's exploration, it's I'm going in this zone and that zone, and it's not about this only. Of course, there is part of that, but that's, you know, the very basic. Once again, 99% of games are like that. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is teamworking. Of course, we have the developers, the composers, and music design that glue them together. So it's teamworking. It's very important. Competencies are key. Language is key. So if I speak, you know, something that is technical, we need to be on the same page. It's very difficult to talk to somebody if you don't have the vocabulary 
to really express you know what you need it's the same with culture you need to know about games you need to know about music in games you need to know about all the environment you know about this and of course it's a three-partite conversation between a composer a developer and a music designer could be the music composer is also the music designer but all of this will lead to better games which is exactly what we're after right so the last game that will show the blend of everything into one gameplay in dying light 2 we have tons of gameplay but one of them is the parkour and here is adrian peza the creative director and he was telling me okay we have the parkour gameplay we need to push people to do parkour but we don't want to force them to do parkour so i want you to see what you can do with this and at some point i'd like to have the parkour to become the parkour flow like a sense of like um hypnotic uh feel you know you're into it the flow is like whoa you don't want to stop parkouring so this is a video of the parkour and you can see the moves you know you jump here you're just running so you're not parkouring per se yeah you do a window jump okay it's a little bit of a parkour jump yeah edge climb now you're jumping on top of the uh, platform then a big jump for you know far jump active land all of these are the moves that you're activating and me i was looking at this and you know that i think th this was my my face when i was looking at this and hearing peza that was me i was over excited so once again he wanted to push players to parkour without imposing so how do you do this you have all of those moves and now this music design has to go along with the composition and the idea was like okay the more you're doing moves because parkour is a succession of moves the bigger the parkour okay the music sorry the bigger the, the parkour of course and the music but at some point we were like okay but to get to this parkour flow we need to do something about this and so if you're parkouring long enough and you're doing something incredible then the parkour flow will kick in and you'll have the best of the music composition and this is why music design and music composition are a blend of the two you know together but also we had to be very careful because we didn't want to push players in pose so the music should be like if the player stops music should stop nicely in a very musical way and it's the same if the player falls into those big you know like void of let's say from a building you're like whoa uh we wanted to have this on the music so how did we do it so first the stop for instance uh you're like running uh it's not the stop it's just like the moves you'll see the moves will activate the music And now you stop. So that was something really, really unique to do. As you could see, there is this blue bar that we added. This is us showing you that it's increasing the value of, you know, that I showed you uh, of the parkour. Uh, success succession of moves and so the music is growing and growing and growing and then if you stop if you stop then the music stops and you could hear how nice it was stopping it wasn't like a fade out or oh some people talk to me I'm sorry um, uh, it wasn't like a fade out or anything like this it was a blend of you know this is why when I say states and layers people tend to believe like yeah it's like yeah it's using states and layers but in a such fashion that uh it's you know something i've never seen except for in this game so please you know make tell me show me because i'm a gamer i've been playing tons of games and i've never seen something like this and i want you know to have more experiences like that so how do you do when you stop and you go back that's the result music stops <laughs> And listen how, yeah, the void, 
when you go through a big space, listen how the music reacts. We added this real-time effect on the music so you would feel like, ooh, you know, I'm falling, I'm losing the bass, uh, there's this big verb opening up and, you know, and uh, the equalization's changing. Everything is in real time depending on your actions. And so in the end, what is parkour flow? You know, when you get to the last bit of the parkour, this is the feeling you will get. That's the red thing here. <sighs> And that's it. That's it for this presentation. I hope you liked it. Um, I was, I mean, let's hope that it will help some people to find new ways, new paths for making music in games. I'm looking forward to your work. Please share it on the comments if you did anything that is, you know, something you're proud of. I'll be looking into it because I'm eager to see what uh, everybody's doing out there. Thank you again. And uh, well, see you in my next game.